Hello and welcome to Oxplore, the home of big questions. Today we're going to be talking to Dr David Burks, who's a specialist in political philosophy at the University of Oxford. And he's going to be helping us to think about how and why the death penalty is used as a form of punishment and whether or not it's a good one or whether there might be better alternatives out there. And this discussion is part of our big question, is the death penalty OK? So, David, let's dive right in. Is there a better form of punishment than the death penalty? Well, I think the first question is, why should we punish people anyway? And we don't think it's OK to lock up innocent people in the street. We think that you would have had to have committed a criminal offence um, for it to be OK to send someone to prison, for example. So the question is, why should we punish anyone at all? And there's a lot of different theories about this. And some people think we should punish people to um, deter other people from committing offences. So if you know that uh, you're going to be sent to prison, you're less likely to commit a crime that's going to send you to prison. Um, other people think that we should uh, punish people to change the character of the criminal. If we, if we send them to jail, they're going to change as per people. They're going to be less likely to commit crimes. But then some other people think that, well, you've done some bad things. Now you deserve to have some bad things done to you. So with the death penalty, um, we can see how this ticks many of these boxes. So, you know, if you think that you're going to be killed when you commit a crime, um, you're, it seems like reasonable to think that you're less likely to commit those crimes. Um, and also, like, dying is like one of the worst possible things that could happen to you. And so if you think, well... A bad person deserves bad things happening to them. Well, killing them seems like a pretty bad thing. But personally, I think that a punishment should try and rehabilitate the offender. And the death penalty just doesn't do this. So what I'm working on is to try and figure out if there are better ways to punish criminals. OK, well, can you give us an example of that? So what I'm currently really interested in is the use of medicine to make people less likely to commit crimes. So some scientists think that by changing the chemicals in a person's brain, um, you can make them less violent, less aggressive. And if we had a drug that could change the chemicals in someone's brain, it could work to reduce crime. So for example, one of the chemicals in the brain is serotonin. And some scientists think that if we increase the amount of serotonin in someone's brain, they're less likely to be violent or aggressive. So some scientists are very interested in developing new drugs that could prevent bad people from doing bad things in the future, such as violent crimes. Other people think that we could use deep brain stimulation to make people less likely to commit crimes. So at the moment, we use deep brain stimulation to treat Parkinson's. Um, and this is where we insert implants actually into the brain and send electricity into various parts of the brain. And this could potentially change that person's behaviour. So maybe there's potential to use deep brain stimulation to make someone less likely to commit a crime. So obviously this is a long way off in the future. But a lot of scientists are really excited about the possibility of switching something in a criminal's brain to make them no longer commit a crime. So in what ways would that be a better punishment than the death penalty? Well, first of all, it's going to be a lot cheaper. I mean, these drugs potentially will only cost a few dollars per dose, whereas we know that the death penalty is really expensive. We know incarceration is really expensive. So that would be one reason to prefer it. So another reason we might really like these drugs is that they're going to be more effective than incarceration. I mean, admittedly, it's not going to be as effective as the death penalty, because, of course, when you're dead, you're not going to be able to commit any crimes. But prison actually isn't that effective at preventing crime. I mean, obviously, if you're locked up, there are lots of crimes you're unable to commit. Um, but reoffending rates are really high when prisoners are let out of prison. And I think the final reason to really be interested in using medicine to prevent crime is that you could think it's a lot more humane. I mean, after all, if you're locked up in prison, you're going to damage your relationships. It's going to damage your career prospects. 
It's also going to harm your dependents. Say if you have kids, you're not going to be able to support them. But these drugs will enable the criminals to live good lives outside of prison. So they'll be able to maintain their relationships. They'll be able to look after their kids. They'll be able to keep their jobs. And that seems a really important reason to think that these drugs are interesting, at least. But some people think that it's just too good for criminals. Uh, uh, punishment is meant to make the person suffer. And this doesn't make the person suffer that much. It's too good for them. And that's why the death penalty is attractive. That's why prison's attractive. Because at least if you lock someone up, they're going to be miserable. They're going to lose their children. They're going to not be able to do the things they love. But these drugs are going to enable the criminal to live a normal, happy life. But wouldn't it be wrong to force someone to take those kind of drugs that are going to change their personality? And I think that's a, a fair point. But you've got to think, is that worse than being killed? Is it worse to be forced to take these drugs than to have your life ended? Or is it even worse to be, have your personality changed a bit, but you can still maintain your friendships, your career, and look after your children? It seems that even if you think it's bad to have your personality changed, it's not the worst thing that could happen to you. Dying is probably one of the worst things that can happen to you. Or maybe we could give the criminal the choice between taking these drugs or facing the death penalty. Would that be okay? Now, some people think that you can't possibly consent to that sort of drug. When you're faced with death or doing something, you, it's, you're pretty much always going to choose to do that thing. So a lot of people don't think it's a real choice. It's not a meaningful choice because when you're faced between the decision of choosing death or anything else, you're pretty much always going to choose anything else rather than dying. And so you're just practically forcing the drugs on them. You're just pretending to give them a choice. It's a false choice. Well, you can imagine if you're um, in hospital and you're going to die unless you receive this painful operation and the doctor says, would you like to have this operation? You think that you can agree to the operation. You think that's a free choice, even though you're faced with death or receiving something. So what's the difference here? Okay, uh, but what kind of implications might that have for wider society? But one, one question then is that why are we only administering these drugs to criminals? Why don't we give these drugs to people before they've committed a crime? I mean, what would be wrong with that? So you could imagine that. You could imagine a crime-free society. We all are on these drugs and no one's committing any crimes. We're all law-abiding. I mean, what would be the problem with that? How would you feel if a person came along and offered you a drug that would make you a better person? Would you take that drug? Even if you knew it would fundamentally change who you were as a person. And what if they didn't offer it to you, but they forced you to take it? They thought that this is what's good for you. I'm going to do what's best for you by making you take this drug. How would you feel about that? Well, of course, the problem then would be that you're faced with a country full of drug people having their freedom taken away, the freedom to choose whether they'd want these drugs. And would that be worthwhile? Would that be a price worth paying? You might think these drugs are problems. You might think these aren't ideal. They're not perfect. They're going to have side effects as well. They're not going to just simply make a person less likely to commit a crime. They're going to change other aspects of their uh, behaviour that we think is perfectly legal, perfectly uh, morally correct. We're going to change those parts of them too. But still, you might think that's a price worth paying. When the alternative could be, say, the death penalty when we're killing them. These drugs, they, they're not perfect, but surely they're better than death. Well, that is a very interesting argument. Uh, you've certainly given us some great stuff to be thinking about. But, you know, ultimately it isn't really about what Professor Burks thinks is the right answer. It's about what you think and about how you cast your vote for this big question. But thanks so much for being with us today, David. It's been really great to hear your perspective. It's a pleasure. And for those of you listening in, thanks for exploring this question with us. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you next time.